Okay, so I would like to very briefly, it's, it's a complex issue, but I will try to be brief on uh, the phenomenon of the changing paradigm, another changing paradigm of type 2 diabetes treatment, namely uh, intensifying treatment from the very beginning. This should be of no surprise. This is, by the way, hospital where I work. I work in the second big building. This is where internal medicine departments are. Diabetes one is on the third floor. Uh, but going back to the subject, uh, talking about multiple medications in type 2 diabetes should, not, should be no surprise for anyone. Uh, this is one of the concepts what constitutes type 2 diabetes. Uh, the, main, the, the main denominator, common denominator, as the authors of this article from 2016 16 suggested, is lack of insulin. It's a relative failure of insulin secretion by beta cells, but there are a number of other pathways and they all count up to 11. The Franza was writing about eight, about octet. Here we have 11 players, which eventually lead to hyperglycemia. It's then obvious, I guess, to anyone that we cannot control glucose with a single agent, perhaps at the very beginning. And we have accumulation of data showing that the more agents in a safe way are used from the very beginning, that is only for the benefit of the patients. As a comparison, I'm using the current rules for treating hypertension. This is not questioned by anyone. Uh, there are also multiple, multiple evidence here. But the current recommendations for treating hypertension is to start with two agents in one pill, then three agents in one pill, and only when spironolactone is being added, we come to using two pills. And uh, India is a world leader in using fixed dose combinations. Wherever I come to your country, I'm thrilled with the options which are available to the patients, and it also, of course, happens in diabetes. In Europe, it's much more complicated, and fixed dose combinations are usually, hard to say why, more expensive than using single pills. So if hypertension uses a combined treatment from the beginning, and this is the disease of a much simpler and less complex pathology, pathophysiology, than type 2 diabetes, uh, why we are not using it? Look, Let's look at the some samples of, of some evidence. Uh, where is the benefit of using combined therapy from the very beginning with at least two agents? Uh, first of all, there is a great power to reduce blood glucose. This is the study, 2007, not a new one, where citagliptin was used together with metformin, and we have the largest reduction in HbA1c from baseline uh, in comparison to a single agent used. If we look at a more modern combination, SGLT2 inhibitor and linagliptin, also here, this is on the left-hand side, we have the largest reduction, largest drop in HbA1c. That is also pretty obvious. Using two agents gives better result than using just a single one, although the results are not additive. So it's not that we add MPA plus, plus lina 122 plus one, and we will be well over 2% of reduction. No. Uh, but both are still more than a single agent. Another benefit of using combination therapy from the very beginning is delay in adding another agent. This is the study showing how, what percentage of patients exceeded a target or get over, got over the treatment target and patients on metformin used in a single, as a single pill, uh, this was, they simply, greater number of these patients failed with the therapy. While they were using citagliptin and metformin, this increase was significantly slower. So giving to agents from the very beginning also let us maintain patients on better treatment and avoid the delay in intensifying the treatment. Nowadays, we know it's very important. But the study which really made us think about using two agents from the very beginning was a verified study. And this, I guess, uh, this study is well known to many of you. It, it is a very important paper where patients were treated uh, from the beginning of diabetes diagnosis, only six months before the uh, enrolling to the study, they could have diabetes for just half a year. Uh, they were either randomized to a group treated with metformin only or metformin plus DPP-4 inhibitor of vilagliptin. And what is seen clear, clearly here in this figure 
is that using two drugs from the very beginning as the initial pharmacotherapy delayed the need to initiate insulin by about two years. If we compare 36 months and 62 months, uh, this is the efficacy of the treatment for half of patients. Uh, the difference is about two years. So it's pretty effective. It gives the patients what the patients want. Very few patients are enthusiastic about insulin therapy. It is also the treatment which is free from hypoglycemia risk. And that's another point. Arrival of the drugs which are free from hypo uh, makes this early combination possible. We cannot use sulfonylurea and metformin early because thus we would run a very high risk of hypoglycemia. Sulfonylurea used in newly diagnosed patients, whatever low dose and whatever mild sulfonylurea we would use will lead to hypoglycemia in many of them. But somehow, if we look at the data, which are uh, the recommendations, which are still valid, this is not a very old recommendations from American Association of Clinical Endocrinologists from se seven years back. Very clearly at that time, we were at the stage of stepwise treatment. So monotherapy, then dual therapy, then triple therapy. And the clear indications where we should go higher and this threshold for intensifying treatment in these guidelines it was 7.5. If we look at the current uh, recommendations from ADA, we can see that this rule of using metformin first and then second and third agent is somehow becoming more relaxed because just a year ago, what it said here, first line therapy is lifestyle modification and metformin, and this was without any doubt. Here it says, and it generally includes metformin. So we are more allowed here to use metformin or not, or other drugs or metformin with another drug as well. In Poland, that's one of the reasons I'm presenting this topic. In Poland, this is the cover of our journal current topics in diabetes, where we uh, publish in January our guidelines for the management of patients with diabetes that are available free online. Uh, what we suggested two years ago is that patients who are drug naive and are of very high cardiovascular risk, have many, many cardiovascular risk factors, or cardiovascular disease, or systolic heart failure, or chronic kidney disease, they, at the initiation of pharmacotherapy, should be getting SGLT2 inhibitor plus metformin or GLP-1 receptor agonist plus metformin. So we are brave enough to suggest this treatment from the very beginning in high-risk patients. And that's what we actually are doing now. We, we're trying to adopt this policy in Poland for the last two years. It's a step or two ahead of our main ADA ESD guidelines consensus, but the evidence is here, and we believe this is for the best benefit for the patient. Uh, why it makes sense to combine metformin with SGLT2 inhibitor and GLP-1 receptor agonist, I don't think I have to convince you that's a very natural combination, but also a nice combination is to combining SGLT2 inhibitor and the GLP-1 receptor agonist. The problem is usually the price. Even if these drugs are reimbursed in some of you, in most of European countries, they are still pretty expensive. And this dilemma, why we are not using these two agents from cardiovascular point of view is very clear. Look at the editorial published just a year ago, a year and a half ago by Alice Cheng. She's one of the leading Canadian, but very well known in US as well in the world diabetologist. Uh, she published it in circulation and she made the point why we choose between SGLT2 and GLP-1. This is what we do in our recommendations at the very beginning, when we can actually use both. Their uh, mechanism of action is totally different, but one exception. Both drugs increase natriuresis, of course, SGLT2 inhibitor in a great, at a greater extent, and uh, GLP-1 receptor agonist at a slightly lower extent, but still, this is the only pathway they cover together. Otherwise, the mechanisms are totally different. And cardiovascular risk protection, which is now the main target for treating type 2 diabetes patient, will be even more effective if we use it. So just presenting with this brief argument, I think I will finish before my time, which always makes the chairpersons happy. 
I would uh, summarize with this again an excerpt, the final paragraph, in fact, of the paper I showed at the very beginning about this multiple uh, pathophysiology of type 2 diabetes. The authors, and among them were the former presidents of the ADA, they say here, look at this sentence. We advocate the introduction of combination therapy early, and it was in 2016, early in the pharmacological management of the disease. And how we should look at the drugs, they use the word, all the medications should be viewed as complementary, not as a competitive agent or as a failure uh, rescuing patients, like we salvage therapy after inevitable treatment failure. This point of view is not original, what I'm presenting you here. Uh, we have the evidence, as I said, and more and more voices supporting this type of approach can be heard. The main, the bottom line here is that we have drugs free from hypos practically. And these are DP4 inhibitors, SGLT2 inhibitors, and GLP1 receptor agonists. These three agents plus metformin, uh, any combination of those, of course, it depends on the patient, on his clinical profile, risk profile, and so on, can be used at the very beginning. And we have this at hand. Uh, these are the fixed dose combinations of DP4 inhibitors and metformin which have been around in Europe for about a decade. Uh, every DP4 inhibitor can be combined with metformin. Uh, Ucras was the, the earliest one with vildagliptin. We have also uh, combinations of SG2 inhibitors like erythroglyphosin plus metformin, or the most exciting one, erythroglyphosin with cetagliptin. However, MSD with erythroglyphosin, they are not really promoting this drug. It's not uh, very popular. But the concept is here, combining SGLT2 inhibitor, DP4 inhibitor, also a very nice solution. Metformin as a third agent of this fixed dose combination would be ideal. So just to conclude, uh, I would argue for, I would say a combination therapy, yes, absolutely. Why? Because our favorite disease has complex pathogenesis. The disease progression type 2 diabetes is inevitable. Uh, early combination therapy, as we can see in many more studies that I just showed you are effective and they are tested in chronic diseases. Here, hypertension should be our pattern and the way we should go forward. Uh, combining metformin with any incretin agent or SGLT2 inhibitor yields no hypoglycemia and in addition offers weight reduction to many of the patients. And this, and that's, that's um, the spelling error I made on purpose, this is the nightmarish, this awful insulin therapy is uh, actually and quite effectively delayed. We also offer, and that's probably the most important, early cardio and nephroprotection using these drugs from the very beginning. But how we should do it? And this is my almost final slide with suggestions or just I'm sharing with you our practice for which patients we combine what drugs. So, for example, metformin with DP4 inhibitor could be for all, but especially for those who are not very obese, without complications, and for the elderly. That's a very good solution for the elderly because DP4 inhibitors are exceptionally well tolerated. Metformin and SGLT2 inhibitors, again, for all, but especially for those with heart failure, cardiovascular disease, chronic kidney disease, and or NASH uh, with uh, liver um, uh, steatosis. Any SGLT2 inhibitor has been shown to decrease it. Metformin and GLP-1 receptor agonists, again, for all, but especially number one, the more obese the patient is, the more likely he or she should be to be treated with GLP receptor agonist. Triple combination, even better. If we combine pills only, metformin, DP4 inhibitors, and SGLT2 inhibitors, three different pathways, and we are using it in patients with very high glucose. If initially patients start with high glucose and they decline insulin therapy to control glucose at the very beginning of the disease, this is what we can use with a very good effect. However, if patients have all these additional comorbidities, that's even better. And that's probably the combination for the future, not perhaps yet for the present because of the price and not enough data. But this is if we meet in two, three, and I'm pretty sure five years time, this is what we will be talking about as a 
normal uh, treatment regimen, very frequent. Metformin plus SGLT2 inhibitors already, at least two of them will be off patent in five years time and GLP-1 receptor agonists. These are for all the above patients, but especially those with ovoid or obese, those who are better off now, today, have a little bit, bit more money, and of course with vascular complications. We're fighting diabetes, who here, which here is shown by Gulliver. That's the picture uh, describing one of the oldest European novels. And we try to hold it in place by multiple ties and links. And the more drugs we use in a safe and wise manner, the more effective we will be and the best protection against complications we can offer to our patients. Thank you very much for your invitation and your very kind invitation to this meeting.